You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thank you so much for joining me here today on our Weight Loss and Wellness Wednesday. We've got a great topic for you today, and that is how to increase your own natural growth hormone by up to 2,000%. Pretty amazing. And you might say to yourself, well, what is growth hormone? Isn't that the stuff that you might take to like build really big muscles or something like that? Well, it's not that at all. I mean, you can you can do that to that extent with injecting it. We're talking about how to use your own natural growth hormone production to actually strengthen what? To strengthen your metabolism, to boost your mood, to increase bone density, to lower your chances for diabetes, for cardiovascular-based disease, for things such as dementia, lowered metabolism as well increase in what's called protein synthesis. So it helps to, again, build back up that metabolism. The other thing too is it helps to burn more body fat. It makes your hair, skin, nails, all of those things stronger, more vital, has a little bit more glow to them as well. No doubt about that. And one of the big things about growth hormone that's under, or I should say, um, not looked at enough is its ability to boost mood and overall well-being. So all these things sound amazing, right? Well, they are, and that's why our body obviously produces this thing called growth hormone. Keeps our body strong, it keeps it young, it keeps it supple. It's something that we want, but as we age, we start to produce less of it. Well, a couple things for that. One of the reasons is we naturally produce a little less as we age, but there are things that we can do to boost it. And I'm going to give you one of those big things, obviously, today, how we can boost that. But here's how it works overall. So you know, I mentioned this quite a bit, called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis or the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis. And so what happens is your hypothalamus is something in your brain, right? So we'll just talk about it. Part of your brain that signals then the pituitary gland to send other signals now to the glands within your body, okay? So when I say HPA axis, it's the hypothalamus telling the pituitary gland, telling the adrenal glands to produce something such as the adrenal medulla to produce something such as norepinephrine or to the adrenal cortex to produce something such as cortisol or glucocorticoids. And for the thyroid, well, what are we doing? We're producing more thyroid stimulating hormone, more TSH. So we can look at the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland as the control center of the brain. I think that's the best, really say it right in the middle of the brain and it sends those signals down to the body. Well, the hypothalamus in this case is sending out a signal for growth hormone releasing hormone, which then tells the pituitary gland, so there's this beautiful little synchronicity to produce something now with growth hormone. And then it gets one more signal now to your liver, so this actually sends signals to the liver as well, to produce something called IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1. And now, again, we don't want too much of this, but we're not going to get too much of it if we're doing this naturally, of course, right? And we're not eating the foods that super spike that as well, which I've spoken about on previous podcasts. I've talked about them on a bunch of the interviews I'm being interviewed on as part of my book tour coming out in April. I'll make you aware of those right on Instagram, of course, and probably on the Friday reviews. But what happens is this. Once our body gets the signals to produce more growth hormone, we start to build more muscle mass. Now, I'm not talking about bulking up and becoming huge because a lot of the people I work with my practice, they don't want to put on a lot of muscle to look bulky. Totally understand that. A lot of people don't. I mean, some of the people I work with certainly want to put on a lot more muscle, but not everyone does. And again, that's not going to happen without doing the specific lifting, without having the specific hormones, without eating the specific type of diet, and you know, just being that type of body type as well. So that's really, really important. But it also produces, again, the body's ability to keep bone strong And of course, that's extremely important as we're aging. The other thing is it helps to burn body fat. So besides the bone, the muscle, the connective tissue, and help build that up, it actually helps to burn body fat at the same time. Pretty amazing. One thing I didn't mention is one of the ways that it helps with metabolism 
is that it allows you to feel more satiated. You produce that hormone called ghrelin, which it can be manufactured and signaled from the stomach back up to the brain, back up to the pituitary gland to say, okay, we're good. We can stop eating. We feel satiated. We feel full. Let's burn some body fat. So pretty impressive, this thing, overall growth hormone, right? Well, when's it typically produced? It's produced during the day, but really we get a bigger spike at night. That's extremely, extremely important. And that's why I want to mention as we go through how to boost this hormone by up to 2000%, what we need to do. So just keep in mind, if you are someone who's currently suffering from lower mood or high cholesterol, or you might have some type of diabetes, insulin resistance, you look like your metabolism's going down a little bit, bones aren't as strong, your body's not as supple, any of those things. You just don't look you know, and feel as strong and youthful as you once did, hair, skin, nails, all of those things. Well, you could be lacking a little bit in growth hormone. And I'm not recommending that you get growth hormone injections. That's absolutely not what I'm recommending. And I actually have seen the research and show that, not, of course, not in everyone, but it can lead to cancerous tumor-based growth. Okay, so we want to be careful with that. We want to be very, very careful with that. Is there a time and a place for that? Absolutely, of course, time and a place for everything, right? But for the majority of the people, even as you're aging, I can't recommend it. But if you're someone that wants to burn more body fat, make your muscles stronger, more supple, add a little bit more tone to the body, boost your mood, enhance all of the vital systems of the body, we want to boost growth hormone. Okay, so now how can we do that? Well, really important is that this one study that came out And this, let me see if I can just get the name of the study, because I believe it was out of Intermountain Medical Center. Yes, Intermountain Medical Center is the name of it. And it was actually a a fairly large study. So that's why I I like to look at studies that had quite a bit of people. So there was multiple studies, 2007, 2011, over 4,500 people. So it was not a small study. And what they did was actually really simple. Now, why do I like simple research? Because it can take away all of a lot of the other factors, meaning like, okay, Well, what were the people eating? How were they living? Well, they did one thing and only one thing. They had the 4,500 people come in for the study and all they did was this. Now they had, they had a control group and they had the regular group, the people who were going to be doing this thing, which was a 24 hour fast. So during that 24 hour fast, all the people did, this is all they did was drink water. That's it. They only drank water. And at the end of the 24 hours, they looked at their body's growth hormone production. And what they found was that for women, it was boosted by 1,300%. Not 100 times, 1,300%. I mean, absolutely amazing. And for men, it was boosted by 2,000%. Pretty more remarkable. I mean, for doing what? For fasting for 24 hours. So now we say, okay, does this work in the real world? And what we saw actually in some of these studies was that... In Mormons who routinely fast, they had those elevated levels of growth hormone. I think it's really interesting as well because in most major religions, if you look at it as well, there's always a period of fasting. You know, it might be all day on Saturday. It might be from sunup to sundown. It might be from sundown one night to sundown the next. Well, you're getting in these 24-hour fasts. And I look at that and I say, wow, how much healthier would we be if we started to add this routinely into our schedule. And you know, I've spoken about this before. And what I want to talk about now is the difference between, you know, intermittent fast, which a lot of people are are trying to extend later and further into their day, and how I don't think that that's good for the majority of people, because the majority of people are extremely stressed. And for a lot of women over and over, I see in my practice, which again, is a clinical practice. I have people come in, I meet with them, I run labs, I get to see what's working and what's not working. And for a lot of women, and again, this isn't much for men, but I believe it, especially for women because of the reproductive system, is that women often get lowered levels of their hormones, such as progesterone and such as um, estrogen as well. And what it seems to be too, is if the body is even starting to do a good thing and tap into body fat, well, what happens is we can start to lower those estrogen levels, lower those progesterone levels in women. The other thing that I see is a lowering of thyroid if we're doing too much intermittent fasting. What does that mean? Well, it means for a lot of people, going from dinner one night to lunch the next day is too long a period of time. And again, that's for most people, 16 to 18 hours of their doing this intermittent fast. And this is kind of advocated by a lot of people right now. I want to let you know from a clinical perspective, this is not the right thing to do for every person out there, and especially 
not for women. A smarter thing is that I see works for almost every single person in the world. Not every person, right? Because there's always a contraindication. For example, people who go into hypoglycemia, low blood sugar because of adrenal-based issues. Again, this can be corrected and should be corrected within a period of a time of about three to four months, but they may need to eat a little bit more often to keep those blood sugar levels more stable and maybe before bed, but again, only for a shortened period of time. For most people, what works tremendously well is stopping eating after dinner, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night, somewhere around there. The earlier, actually, the better, the earlier, the healthier. And what we want to see then is not eating for the next 12, maybe 13, 14 hours. Okay. So for example, in my schedule, I try to get home, try to eat with my family somewhere around 6, 6.30. That's earlier for us now. It used to be, used to be for my wife and I, closer to eight o'clock at night. Before we had kids, we would typically, we would work later. We would have dinner a little bit later. We might go to bed a little bit later as well. But now, of course, I want to try to have dinner with my family. And for most nights, I'm able to do that. And that's somewhere around six o'clock hour, okay? So let's say we finish by 6.30. Okay, if I'm waking up the next morning around 5.30 a.m., I'm not going to eat yet. It's not my 12 hours. I'm also not trying to eat right away when I wake up. I'm allowing my body to ease into the day. So the first thing I do is, and again, you've heard my morning routine before. And if you haven't, check out the Mindset and Motivation Mondays. Check out my morning routine on Total Wellness Tuesdays. And so what I'm doing, though, right when I wake up is I'm doing the typically the daily fruit and vegetable blend, pinch of sea salt, and a, a, a whole lime. I put a whole lime in there. And that gives me a lot of flavor to that as well. Because for me, I just don't want plain water when I wake up. Now, totally, if you want to do plain water, Excellent. That's going to help rehydrate your body because remember, you probably haven't had any water for the last eight to 10 hours, like half a day without water. You need water to hydrate the system. So I like a little bit of that flavor and I know that that's not going to kick me out of a fast because in the daily fruit and vegetable blend, there's two grams of sugar coming from all those 22 organic fruits and vegetables. This is not sugar that's been added to it. This is simply from the fruit and vegetables, which is completely fine. So that's what I do. I drink that down. It's refreshing my body. It's hydrating my body. And then I'm getting ready for the day. Obviously, I start my basically 60-minute routine, and I'm typically not going to have any food until 7 a.m. So that's an hour and a half after waking up for me. So what I'm looking at is somewhere around, let's say, a 13-hour fast for myself personally. I believe most people between the 12 and 14 hours is going to be perfect. But once they start their day, if you're in under stress, well, your body, if, especially if you just put coffee in your body, a lot of fat, people are fasting, but they're doing coffee. Well, now you're adding glucocorticoids, which is stress hormones. So you're adding stress hormones on top of stress hormone because when you're fasting, your body can produce more stress. A lot of people say it's anti-stress. I haven't seen that. haven't seen it play out in the research. And if you want, it doesn't matter about the research. Why don't you do research for yourself? And all you have to do is you can just do a normal stress day. You can wake up, you can do your fasting, run a thyroid adrenal hormone test or just adrenal hormone test. I'll link those up in the show notes. Just simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash 817 for all the show notes today. Now, if you do that, just saliva tubes. All you do is you literally spit into the saliva tube and there's four of those during the day. You can see your own cortisol production during the day. Then you can prove it to yourself. You don't need to take anybody else's word for it. You don't need to take my word. You don't need to take anybody else's word. Just do your normal daily routine. See what your cortisol levels look like. See where your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone, your DHEA, and for added bonus, add the thyroid to it. Look at your TSH. How is your thyroid doing? You can test that. You don't need to guess. It's so important that I believe that you always test your beliefs. And that's why people say to you, oh, you're against, say to me, you're against this, you're against that. I'm not against anything. I'm not against anything, and I'm not necessarily for everything. What I look at is I say, who is this right for? Who is this right for? And then I recommend it to them. Because for some people, I do recommend a longer fast. It just depends on the person. And it might not be forever either. It might be for a period of a month or two or two months or three months. Like I look at things based on the individual, but I have to give you a foundation, right? Because if we're not working one-on-one, then I, I just recommend that you use the protocol in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. And again, that book, you can basically get it anywhere. 100% of all profits are, donate, are donated to charity. And what I want you to do is that's a foundation. It's a place to start. So everyone needs a place to start, right? But if you want to go deeper, run that functional hormone lab test, and you can run it with your local naturopathic doctor. You can run it with your local health practitioner, whoever that may be, or you can run it with us, and you'll get my personal recommendations as well as a call with one of my health coaches to implement that plan. 
But let's give you, let's get a little bit deeper. Let's go into now, besides that overnight fast, which does produce more growth hormone, okay? It does. But if we want that huge boost, well, you've heard me speak about this before. I actually did an interview with Thomas DeLauer on this and, and other people as well. Here's the thing. A once a week or even just once a month, 24-hour fast is absolutely amazing. And I really believe, again, most people, not everyone, but most people should be doing this and it will not necessarily have the negative effect on your metabolism if you are not doing it daily. It's this problem where people are taking something that's great and then all of a sudden doing it daily. It's this like Western way. It's this Western philosophy where if a little is good, a lot must be better, right? But that's not necessarily true. And again, I was the same exact way. I mean, I really, I'm the same exact way to this day where I want to like max everything out, but I, I fight that now. I just know that that's my personality. So I say, okay, we need to, t-, I say, I, I give myself pep talks all the time. It's like, you need to tone it down in the gym. You know, you're going to burn yourself out. You need to tone it down with this. You need to tone it down with that. I always give myself those little talks. And the same is true with fasting. However, once a week for a lot of people, every other week for most people, and definitely everyone, I would say everyone once a month, to go 24 hours without eating, just drinking water, and probably herbal tea is fine. Herbal tea would be like ginger tea or hibiscus tea or chamomile tea. Zero calorie, okay? No calorie, no stimulants, right? Zero calorie, zero stimulants. Because a stimulant, even such as coffee, can spike blood sugar, believe it or not, because it can spike cortisol, it can spike stress, and then your body can produce and manufacture its own sugar as needed, whether it's from the liver or from the tissue itself. Okay, so here's the deal. How does it work? Well, one easy way that I've been doing myself for years, for years literally, is going from Sunday night to Monday night. It's so easy. Monday is my busiest, it's not hectic, but it's my busiest super scheduled day of the week. And it is my day to basically like get everything that I would want done for the week on a Monday. And that doesn't include like seeing people in my practice because that, that's a little bit different how I do that. But this is the day where I've got a lot of different projects. I'm working with my team. And I could go the whole day. And, and yes, it's a, it's a busy day, but I don't have to be thinking about eating the whole day, right? Because I, I say, oh, okay, I get a little hungry around 10, then maybe a little hungry around 3. But by that time, I know I'm having dinner in a couple hours, so I can make it. And I have another glass of water or tea or whatever it might be. So here's what I do. I stop eating Sunday night. Let's say it's at 6, 6.30 again. And then after that, I go through the day. I have all my water lined up. And I go through the day without consuming any calories at all, just water until dinner that night. Believe it or not, you're never going a day without eating, but you are going 24 hours. It's pretty amazing. I talk about this all the time. It's an easier way to kind of biohack this whole 24-hour fast, which again, that 24-hour fast, what does it do besides boosting growth hormone, right? All these amazing things like burning more body fat, boosting cognitive ability, lowering uh, bad cholesterol, like all of these different things, right? What is it doing? Soaking up blood sugar, it could go on and on. It is what it's, it's also doing is it's helping to kill cancer cell, cells that are forming in your body and all these things w- which autophagy is explained with. So autophagy, as I've said this before, 2016, it won the Nobel Prize in medicine and, and um, oncology. And what we saw was the body's ability to regenerate and destroy on its own cancerous cells in the body, necrotic-based tissue and and pathogens. So what we do is, it's actually very simple, and I've talked about this before, is that even like as a naturopath, I don't heal anyone. I don't heal anybody's body. What I do is try to put you in the position to allow your body to heal itself. That's what happens. I have nothing to do with it at all. I put your body, I help to put your body in a position, or it's actually you do it. I try to give you the blueprint so that you implement it so that your body can then take care of itself. And if it does not have to worry about new food coming in, new toxins coming in from those foods and the oxidative stress and all those different things, then your body has the time, it has the energy and it has the resources to go after cancer cells and necrotic tissue on its own. So really straightforward. I do this a lot of times when I'm flying for the day as well is that I just simply will fast. I will fast. I'll try to be relaxed in my flight. I'll be reading. I will be writing. I will be, you know, kind of in that zone where I don't get too amped up. And that will allow me then to really go through this fast, knowing that I'm going to eat that night. So really simple. Again, you can pick any day of the week that you want. The reason I pick Mondays is simply because over the weekend on a Saturday night, typically Saturday night is when I'll have my cheat meal, or maybe it's even Saturday for brunch. And then I have a normal day on Sunday. I don't recommend, I really don't recommend 
going into a 24-hour fast after drinking the night before. Why don't I talk about that on an upcoming show? I'll talk about when not to do an intermittent fast because a lot of people are doing this wrong and it actually makes the Dr. Ball detox and it makes the other fasts not as easy on them because meaning like they still work, but if you go into it like lower blood sugar because you were drinking the night before, you had this awful meal, it just makes it more challenging for you. That's all. Like You're just making it harder on your body. So I have a normal day of eating on Sunday, especially at least that second half of the day. And then what I'm going to do is go into it at a normal state of blood sugar the next morning, and I'm going to go through the day fasting. Now, there will be times that, and I will do it for myself and I will recommend for others, is that you don't eat on the Monday, meaning that you go from Sunday night till Tuesday morning when you wake up, when you have your breakfast, and then you'll actually go 36 hours. That's obviously even a little bit stronger, a little bit more powerful, but gauge it. So here's what I tell people to do. Here's how to gauge it. You can simply say, how do I feel Monday night? Do I need dinner Monday night or do I feel pretty well? Can I just do maybe a uh, herbal tea such as a chamomile tea? Or can I do a little bit of ginger tea? Or and again, I don't recommend this all the time, but even just a glass of sparkling water so I feel like I'm having something a, a little bit different, like a little treat or so for myself. Now, when you look at the, all of those things, and again, for sparkling water, I recommend the natural-based ones, right? I recommend the Mountain Valley and I recommend the Pellegrino if you're going to do that. Not all day long. This would just be like a little special treat at night, right? So take the place of eating maybe. So what I'm saying is then you'll gauge it for yourself. You'll see how you're feeling that day. Can you take it then to the next morning, which will allow you to even boost those growth hormone levels to a greater extent? I do believe that there is a point of diminishing returns with this. And that's why I I get worried when people are fasting for too long. Now, are there longer fasts? Yes. But for most people, unless you're working with a health practitioner, This 24-hour fast once a week or every other week or once a month is the place to start. I believe that it's healthy for most people. Of course, if you have diabetes, if you have any condition which you would need to work with a health practitioner on this, we'll certainly work with a health practitioner on this. But for most people, you'll be able to safely accomplish this. You'll be able to boost your growth hormone levels, 1,300% for women, uh, 2,000% for men. I mean, again, which is, by the way, an insane number. 1,300%, right? 2,000% more. Pretty phenomenal. And I I believe that this is something that's greatly overlooked. So if you're someone, again, who wants to improve your quality of life, improve your overall well-being, improve your cognitive ability, improve your body's ability to utilize blood sugar, to burn body fat, to build up bone, cartilage, muscle, to improve the strength of the body, to lower bad cholesterol, increase good cholesterol, improve overall heart function and aerobic base capacity. This is something that you may want to look at. And again, everything that you can try to get through drugs, we can do that naturally, right? We can do it naturally. We don't need to do the hormone replacements. We don't need to do all of those things. We can boost growth hormone even as we age by implementing things like a 12-hour overnight fast every day and a 24-hour fast once a week or even just once a month. Thank you, everyone, I, uh, for tuning into the Cabral Concept. I truly appreciate each and every one of your listens. I hope this was helpful. And if it was, feel free to feel free to share this with anyone you believe it could help. Take care. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues. After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. 
I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health and balance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.